In this video, we're going to review how to determine whether a whole molecule is polar or nonpolar, as well as take a look at what happens when we put multiple polar molecules together. If we start with the molecule in the top left, let's write out the electronegativities for hydrogen, carbon, and oxygen respectively. We can see that carbon's electronegativity of 2.6 is greater than hydrogen's electronegativity of 2.2, which means that the electrons in the bonds between carbon and hydrogen are going to be pulled towards carbon, so we can draw in the dipole vectors showing the movement of electrons towards carbon. However, when we consider oxygen versus carbon and the fact that there are two bonds between oxygen and carbon, we see it has an even larger difference in electronegativity, which means that the electrons in the double bond between carbon and oxygen are going to move towards oxygen like so. The other thing we can consider is whether this molecule has symmetrical or asymmetrical lone pairs. You'll notice the lone pairs are not actually drawn on this structure here, but we know that, that both carbon and hydrogen do not have lone pairs, whereas oxygen almost always will have two. And we can see if we draw a line of symmetry horizontally, we can see the top of our molecule has two lone pairs on the oxygen and zero lone pairs on either carbon or hydrogen. From this, we can see that there is more negative charge on the top half of the molecule and less on the bottom. We can also see that all of our dipole vectors point upward towards oxygen as hydrogen is losing its electrons to carbon and carbon is losing its electrons to oxygen. From this, we can conclude that the top half of the molecule has a slight negative pole and the bottom half of the molecule has a slight positive pole. I should more accurately put the slight positive poles on the hydrogens like this. If we take a look at NH3, again we can write the electronegativities of hydrogen and nitrogen. This molecule is actually drawn in 3D. The most important thing to take away from this is that the nitrogen to hydrogen bonds are not actually symmetrical, and this will be important when we look at the dipole vectors. We can see there's a fairly large difference in electronegativity. 3.0 minus 2.2 is 0 0.8, and because nitrogen has a higher electronegativity, all of the dipole vectors are going to point towards nitrogen like this. Now, again, if we consider the lone pair symmetry, or lone pair asymmetry rather, let's look at the molecule in top half and bottom half. The top half has a lone pair and the bottom half has none, which means because of lone pairs, the top half has more negative charge than the bottom half does, and we can see, because these hydrogens are not directly opposite one another, all of these dipole vectors are pointing upward together and do not cancel. So for that reason, we see that nitrogen is going to be the negative pole in our dipole, and each of the hydrogens, because it's losing electrons from nitrogen's high electronegativity, are going to have the partial positive charges. If we look at this molecule called dichloromethane, if we write in the electronegativities, we know about carbon and hydrogen already. Because carbon has a slightly higher electronegativity than hydrogen, the electrons in the carbon to hydrogen bonds are going to migrate towards carbon, and we can see overall that the electrons are moving this way towards carbon. Now, if we consider chlorine in this mix, chlorine has a much higher electronegativity of 3.2, which means stronger electronegativity than carbon means that it's going to pull the electrons towards itself like this. Once again, lone pairs aren't drawn in the structure, but we know that carbon and hydrogen don't have any, but we can draw the three lone pairs that chlorine would have on it like this. Now here, it's not a matter of top and bottom for the line of symmetry. Let's bisect the molecule diagonally 
like this. Now, if we do this, we can see that the top right half of the molecule has no lone pairs at all, whereas the bottom half has all of the lone pairs on the chlorine atoms like this. And this also happens to line up with the directions that our dipole vectors move. We see the electrons moving from hydrogen to carbon, and then again from carbon to chlorine, indicating that the negative side is going to be on the chlorine atoms and the positive side on the hydrogen atoms like this. So what we can see, again by reviewing the technique in the last video, is that all three of these molecules are polar covalent and all three or in terms of their bonds and polar molecules when we look at the whole molecule structure. Now this diagram is arranged in such a way where all of the atoms are pointing to a very specific direction. If we start with dichloromethane, its negative side we see here is pointing kind of towards the hydrogens on NH3. And we know that the hydrogens are the positive side, and we know that all negative charge is naturally going to attract to positive charge like this. So again, no accident. Likewise, we see the nitrogen, which is the negative side of ammonia, is pointing towards the positive side of the hydrogens in the top left molecule because all negative charge will attract to positive charge. Again, this is not an accident. What we have just recognized here are what we call intermolecular forces. You will recognize the prefix inter, which is the prefix that means between. So an intermolecular force is an attraction, a positive and negative attraction that forms between multiple polar molecules. And that explains why our diagrams are oriented this way so that the negative side of one molecule always points to the positive side of another molecule because of these intermolecular forces. Now the forces that I have drawn here, because every one of these molecules are polar, every single one of them has a dipole, two poles of opposite charge on each, which is why these attractions are what we call dipole-dipole interactions, because they are an attraction that forms between the dipole of one molecule attracting to the opposite charges of the dipole on the next molecule and so on. Before you move on to the next video, there is practice you can do below. Both of these molecules, hydrogen cyanide and dihydrogen sulfide here, both of these are also polar molecules and oriented again in a very specific way. So firstly, see if you can identify where the positive side and the negative side is on each molecule and see if you can identify where the dipole-dipole attraction is between these molecules.